In the previous presentation we related the positions of poles and zeros of a system to the system's frequency response. In this presentation we're going to relate the pole zero diagram or pole zero representation of a system to this three-dimensional view that I have over here. And this three-dimensional view shows what's called the Z surface. And in this case the Z surface has um, two orange cones and also two blue inverted cones. And I'll just rotate this around so that you get a better appreciation of what it is I'm talking about. So there you can see the two inverted cones down at the bottom and the two cones, the orange cones at the top, okay, on the left hand side. And the pole zero diagram is actually a simplified representation of this complex three-dimensional surface called the Z surface. And you get a better appreciation of that once I take a, if I was to take a plan view of this Z surface. So I'm just going to rotate this around so that we can get a plan view of the Z surface. And in the Z surface we can still see the orange location showed the positions of those cones and the blue, dark blue, shows the positions of the inverted cones. And the poles on our pole zero diagram, these X's, correspond to the positions of the center of the cones. So we've got two cones and the centers of them are marked as two X's. And we've also got the inverted cones over here which are shown as the zeros on the pole zero diagram. So really the pole zero diagram is a simplified view of this compli well, complex Z surface. So really what you should be able to start to try to do is to relate the simplified pole zero diagrams to the complex three-dimensional Z surface because really that's what it's representing. Now the plan view of the pole zero diagram also shows a circle and that circle corresponds to the unit circle in our pole zero diagram. And if we rotate the, the Z surface around again we can see that that unit circle which is no longer as a unit circle when we view it like this, it's some complex shape. But that unit circle, and I refer to it as a unit circle, sits on the surface, uh, well it sits on the Z surface. So that unit circle actually sits on the Z surface. And the shape of that um, unit circle, so the, the shape of the unit circle part of the Z surface, is influenced by the positions of the cones and the inverted cones. For example, if I move, I'm going to move the poles, and both poles will be moved together, of course, they're a complex conjugate pair. If I move the position of the pole closer to the unit circle, I'll do that in a second, you'll see that this shape will rise around the region of the cone. So it follows the contour of the cone. Likewise if I was to move the zero out towards the unit circle you can see that the shape of that unit circle part of the Z surface is being influenced by the position of the zero. So That's just happening over there is the best view of it. And if I was to move the pole further away from the unit circle and towards the origin of the unit circle over here so I move the, I'm effectively moving the center of the cone towards the center of the surface, and you can see the impact that has on the shape of the unit circle part of the Z surface. Now that unit circle part of the Z surface closely corresponds to the frequency response of a system. Now I'm not going to explain why in this presentation, but I will explain that in future presentations. But for the moment, um, let's just try to relate this three-dimensional view to this 
um, frequency response a little bit more closely. And perhaps the best way to do that is to remove the rest of the Z surface. So I'll, I'll remove the rest of the Z surface. Um, but before doing that, I'll actually I'm going to swing the Z the, the view around so that we have an end view of this complex Z surface. So now I'm just looking at the Z surface in from the side. And if I click this button, I'm going to remove the, the rest of the Z surface, but just leave the unit circle part. And that is just the unit circle part. And maybe I'll rotate this around so you can see. It's still a three-dimensional shape. I'll bring in the Z surface again temporarily. So you can see that the unit circle part sits on the surface of the Z surface. And we'll just bring back again around to the end view. Okay, now the positions of the poles and zeros will of course influence the positions of the cones but it's also going to have a, a, an impact on the this unit circle part of the Z surface. So let's just move the poles around. So if I move the pole, I'm going to move this pole towards the unit circle, we should see the shape of this rise up a little bit. There we go, we can see it sharpening up there. Now, that also has an effect on the frequency response down here. So if I move the pole, if I move the pole back to where it was, keep an eye on this peak here on the frequency response. That will reduce, but also the selectivity of the frequency response will reduce. And hopefully that's starting to make sense why that selectivity changes now once you have that three-dimensional perspective. Um, I'll also move the zero away from the unit circle and you should know two things. This spike should be reduced in terms of how the severity and selectivity and also in the frequency response that should also reduce. Let's bring that away. Now maybe I'll just do one more example. I'll bring in uh, another pole and I'll move it out towards the unit circle. I'll just put a sharp spike. It's very close to the unit circle. So I have this sharp spike here in the frequency response, but also this sharp spike over here in the um, three-dimensional view. Um, now, let's bring that back. What I'm going to do now is to, to take a view of the Z surface from the other side. Maybe this will make easier to understand if I bring the complete Z surface back. So there's my Z surface. Let's try to... I'm just going to rotate this around. Sorry, I just that's a bit of messing. Okay. Let's try to get the plan view back first of all. So there's my plan view of the Z surface. And what I'd like to do now is take a look from the other side of the Z surface because that's an even closer mapping onto the frequency response of the system. So I'm rotating around. So now I'm, I'm, I hope you can see the zeros are on the other side. I've effectively flipped around the Z surface so we're looking from the other side. And now let's take a complete end view look at this. Okay and we'll remove the Z surface and just leave the unit circle part. And we can see that's a very close mapping onto the frequency response of the system. And I'll just move the circles or the, the pole around so that you can see how that influences. So by moving that pole, so I'm moving that pole you'll see the sharpness and size of the amplification of both this part of the frequency response down here and this part of the unit circle part of the Z surface will be changed so just by moving that pole. So keep an eye on both. I'm just going to move the pole in and out. You can see how the the frequency response has been changed and also the shape of my three-dimensional view. Okay, so I'm hoping that will help you appreciate what the pole zero diagram actually represents. It actually represents this 
fairly complicated structure. Um, I'll put the GUI, which was developed by Tom Krause from Purdue initially, it's been adapted a little bit by myself, but I'll put that up on the website so that you can play around with this a little bit yourself.